Hello, my name is John Child. Um, I teach a module on the Masters in Business Management course that you're taking, um, or will take, uh, called Contemporary Organization. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about this module, um, how it's beneficial for you, how we I go about teaching it and how it's assessed, um, and just give you a bit of background and hope that I can uh, evoke some interest and be glad to see you uh, next year when you take it. Um, so what is this thing, organization, that um, the course is about? Um, when you consider that management is actually getting work done through other people, of course that means those people uh, have to have uh, tasks allocated to them, uh, the work they do has to be evaluated, so you, it has to be controlled, their activities have to be subject to some degree of control, they have to be coordinated, uh, so they're kind of working in the same direction and working effectively together. And these are all aspects of what we mean by organisation. Um, and really what it's trying to do, how you organise people in their work, is trying to make sure that the objectives of your company its strategy, if you like, is effectively imp implemented through what your your staff are, are doing. And um, as you know, there are a lot of changes going on in the world, which mean that uh, strategy has to uh, adjust to uh, more global competition, uh, much more emphasis now on the need to for companies to innovate and so on. And again, the way you design the organization of, of your people and their work and and so on, um, is really intended to support the response to these new challenges. Um, organization, actually, it's, it's a fairly, in some ways, a, a rather nebulous subject, uh, but that means it's actually uh, something that management can't easily just buy off the shelf, like that you can buy technology, you can recruit, uh, um, uh, hopefully, good, skilled people. You can buy all sorts of resources now, but organization is something that you have to work out and design to suit your particular strategy and the situation of your own company, the kind of people it employs, and, and so on. Because obviously how you organize people has, for example, motivational consequences, and that may depend on the kind of staff you have. Are they um, highly skilled and highly um, trained staff who like to work with a lot of autonomy? or are they staff that need a lot more direction? And the extent to which you um, give people autonomy, you decentralize, if you like, uh, as opposed to centralize your management, that also is another dimension of organization. So it's, it, it's a, a competitive, or a source of competitive advantage, which is difficult to, to copy, but can be very um, effective because of that, because your competitors can't necessarily uh, copy. If you've devised a, an effective way of organizing, um, you, they can't just copy it off the shelf because their situation will be rather different and, and they have to work this out for themselves. And with, as I said earlier, with all the changes that are going on, particularly um, the emphasis now on uh, adapting rapidly to changing customer requirements and often competing on the basis of innovation, having superior products, the traditional ways of organizing, which were rather formal and emphasized hierarchy a lot, these now are increasingly becoming ineffective. So there's a lot of interesting um, thinking and changes, experiments in practice going on at the moment, which is what we'll try and cover in the course, uh, seeing how companies are actually adjusting their organization to 21st century conditions, if you like. The module itself starts off uh, looking at uh, forms of organizing within the firm, um, looks at issues like control and coordination, as I've mentioned earlier. Then it, it takes account of the fact that a lot of work now isn't confined within individual firms, so that it crosses boundaries. We have things like global value chains, we have outsourcing, we have networks that are managed and have to be organized um, uh, you know across uh, different national boundaries across different parts of the world and this raises organizational challenges too how do you do this 
how, for example, if you're going to run your R&D on the basis of drawing in contributions from R&D centers in various parts of the world, which if you're a large company, you may well have, um, through using things like virtual uh, technology, uh, virtual teamwork and so on. That's another topic that the course covers. So it goes on to look at outside the individual firm at how you organize its relationships with other firms that are supplying it or, or providing services for it. And then the course moves on to uh, looking at uh, more dynamic processes, two in particular, uh, how you change organization, which is actually a big challenge and many efforts to change organization and to keep it up to date as circumstances change. Many of those efforts fail. It's really quite a significant challenge. And if you look at literature put out by consultants and so forth, like McKinsey's, it's very much uh, a major issue that they are trying to advise firms on. So we look at that. <clears throat> and in connection with innovation, we look at how you can organize to try and promote learning and knowledge development within firms. And then the course ends up by saying, OK, organization can uh, help your company uh, meet uh, uh, economic uh, performance objectives, but also there are social impacts. The way you organize people has a bearing on their psychological well-being and, and uh, uh, for example, if you organize in such a way you have lots of levels between the top and the bottom, that has implications for income inequality and, and these kind of social issues. So at the end of the course, we have a look at how can you organize to reconcile these economic and social uh, considerations. Um, let me just say briefly a little bit about how uh, this course is taught. Um, basically, I try to combine some input from myself that I offer with um, work that the class does on case studies. I use case studies to try and bridge, if you like, the theory and the, the practice. Um, my belief is that a master's course in management um, should uh, try to, to make that uh, uh, bridge, that connection, and should be oriented towards practice. And these case studies uh, try to select from different countries um, and there's, each one is selected to suit a particular topic in the, the module. So that uh, as well as my presentation, there will normally be a, a presentation by a group in the class and then we, we discuss the case based on the presentation. Um, a little bit on assessment. Again, trying to um, direct everything towards what will be of practical use to you um, there's, there's not an exam. Personally, I don't think exams are particularly suited to master's courses. Uh, instead, what I ask you to do is to prepare a report um, relating to one of the topics in the course, could use some of the case study material that we go through. And this report is takes the form of a briefing. You're briefing, let's say, a company chief executive or, or company management on the particular topic. They might be thinking about carrying out an organizational change. What sort of things should they look out for? And you can draw on some of the reading, you can draw on some of the examples we look at, and even sometimes your own um, uh, knowledge uh, and experience to put forward a report that is designed in a, a readable, practical way. It starts off with an executive summary of one page because a lot of managers don't read very much and they may not get beyond one page. And, you know, I try and encourage you to lay it out in a, a form that would be uh, very appropriate for what you may well have to prepare quite often if you go and work for a company, as many of you I'm sure will, or even a, um, a public organisation like a, a government ministry. So again, it's trying to connect the academic and the, the practical through the, the method of assessment. So there's just this one assignment. Uh, report maximum 3,000 words, uh, which you get usually a couple of months to do after the end of the course before you have to hand it in. Um, I should say uh, just one thing. Um, there is a, a, a one main course text which covers everything you need to know about the course. It's, it's one that I, it's a book of mine I revised last year, 2015. Um, and uh, uh, I think it, you'll find it useful. Again, it, it, it has quite a lot of illustrative uh, material in, as well as um, analytical material. 
Um, just uh, two final points. How will this module benefit you? Um, well, I think wherever you work, even if you're working on your own account uh, on a contract with a firm, you're going to come across issues of organization. Uh, your, you, your work is inevitably going to be organized. Uh, and you may well, if you're a manager, have to, as one of your main responsibilities, think about how you organize the work of people reporting to you. So it's going to be a s central issue for you as a manager, and it's certainly a major concern, particularly as you go up the levels, it's a major concern of senior managers. Um, but there is a lot of new thinking and practice going on, a lot of experimentation, um, partly to do with trying to reconcile, you know, organizing for performance with organizing in a way that uh, is more satisfying for people. Um, and I think this challenge makes it a, an intrinsically very interesting subject. It's, it's not a routine subject. You can't lay down formula. You have to uh, analyze and use your judgment in thinking about how best to organize. But I think those aspects make it interesting and I, I think it would be beneficial for you. Just finally, a little bit about me. Um, I have a uh, visiting, well, it's a part-time, if you like, position at Plymouth as a professor of management, but I can, because I retired formally some time ago, but uh, I don't like to sort of, I like to keep going. Um, at the same time, I'm uh, chair professor of commerce in the University of Birmingham, and I have a visiting professorship uh, in China at Sun Yat-sen University in Guangzhou, and I used to do quite a bit of work in China. I, I used to head a, a European Union management program uh, in Beijing uh, some years ago. And previously, I've been a professor at the Aston Business School, and I moved to Cambridge University, worked there for some time. And I've done some work um, in uh, the University of Hong Kong. Um, I've got some business experience, which I think is always helpful if you're teaching about management, uh, initially in Rolls-Royce, then tried to keep this going through consultancy, and also uh, research. I mean, more In more recent years, I've been very much concerned with small firms and how they can manage to go abroad, and that takes you into firms and keeps you up to date. Um, and I've taught on this subject and, and others, but I've taught on this subject for quite a bit of time, although this module uh, is, is newly revamped, as it were. This current year, 2016, is the first time I've, I've taught the new version of the module. And on the whole, I think people have found it interesting and I've had reasonably good feedback and evaluation. So I hope you'll consider joining me next year and um, uh, look forward to uh, meeting you. Um, I will be providing uh, some slides uh, which will be available to you as uh, background on the course. And I've asked the students this year if they'd be kind enough to provide a little bit of feedback, uh, both uh, on the course and what they think about it. So you may get some customer reviews as well. Right, thank you very much.